Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to explore what we would do if we take a test for a certain condition. The condition is relatively rare. Let's say that we have a, a condition uh, that's such that 10 out of 1,000 have this condition, which means that only 1% of the population being tested has that condition. Let's say we use a test that is 98% sensitive, 95% specific. Therefore, we have 2% false negatives, 5% false positives, and if 10 have the disease out of 1,000 and 990 are healthy, that means that we end up with a probability that if you test positive, that you'll have the disease is 16.53%. So that's not very good. That means the probability that if you test positive that you're healthy is 83.47%. So the test doesn't mean a lot at that point. But what we could do is we could take all the subjects out of that test that tested positive and test them again. And then you get a much higher result if they come back positive a second time. So here's the equation that we used to come up with the 16.53%. So what changes? Well, the 98% doesn't change because that's still the sensitivity of the test. So the 98%, 98% stay the same. The 5% doesn't change because if you have a test that is 95% specific, that means there's a 5% probability of false positives. So that all stays the same. But what does stay the same is that in the past, when we tested a population of 1,000, we'd only have a 1% probability that the person being tested actually does have the disease or the condition that you're testing for. But now, if we only take those individuals that tested positive, that number now goes up to 16.53%. Of the ones that tested positive, there's a 16.53% probability that they have the condition. So instead of having a 1% probability that they have the disease, there's now a 16.53% probability. And the same for this 1% changes to 16.53%. Here, this represents the product of the probability that if you test positive, you're healthy, and the probability that you are healthy. Well, the probability that you'll be positive when you're healthy, that still stays at 5%. We expect a 5% false, false positive rate. But the number of people that are now expected to be healthy will now drop 990 out of 1,000 and the initial sample would be healthy, but now since you're only taking those that are, have tested positive, now you know the probability of being healthy if you tested positive the first time is now only 83.47%. So this now changes to 83.47%. And so let's see what that new probability is that you'll have the condition if you test positive based upon running the, set, the test a second time. So let's go ahead and calculate that. In the denominator, we have 0.98 times 0.1653 plus 0.05 times 0.8347. Bring that to the numerator and multiply that times 0.98 times 0.1653, and we get 79.51%. So you can see there's a significant increase, so this is now equal to 79.51%. Let's see if I got that right, 79.51%. So instead of having a probability of 16.53% that you have the condition you're testing for when you test the first time and you test positive, if you only test those individuals that tested positive the first time, you test them a second time, and they test positive a second time, now you're 79.51% sure that they have the condition. Hmm, you say to yourself, well, that may not be that good either. I want to be more sure than that, so maybe you should run the test a third time. So let's go ahead and produce one more video and see what happens when we test a third time, only keeping the sample now of those people who tested positive the first time and positive the second time. And that's how it's done.